oh my God, I'm so excited. I get to talk to you like in real life. Like I know we trade so many comments on Instagram and I'm so grateful that Charles brought us together. And it's, I feel like I've known you literally forever. It's like, you know, this is just normal. We're just talking, but like, it's actually the first time that we're talking live, which is so cool. I know no typing. I feel like as I talk to you, I should be typing on Instagram. Right, with emoji. You know, I'm like, hold on. This is weird. Should I just have my phone in front of me? <laughs> yes. Thank you for having me. I'm very grateful. Yeah, no, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to talk to you and, you know, just learn more about your journey because I think it's so fascinating. You know, you're a chiropractor by day, which, you know, are that's in the wellness space, which, you know, I'd love to hear more about that and your journey into, into that life. But you're a food blogger by night, which is like, and you're, you have this big personality You and it's essentially like two careers to me. That's how it shows up. And it's really cool. Um, and so I'm, I'm fascinated by that. Like, have you always loved to cook? Like, how did that start? Oh, when I was like a little kid, like when Yen Ken Cook was on and the PBS, even before Food Network, yes. right? Uh -huh. Don't you love Yen Ken Cook? Oh. He's the best. Yeah. And Julia Child. So I would watch them even as a really young kid. And I'd beg my mom to go out to the supermarket so that we can make stuff. And then we'd go buy all the ingredients and I'd cook it and make a huge mess. But even from a little kid, I always was like passionate about cooking. And then I'd like make it pretend like we were in a restaurant and I'd serve it as if I was the chef. It was really cute. So I've always loved to cook. And the other thing is, is when I watch TV, um, even as a younger adult, I would watch and I'd be like, wow, that's awesome. But that's way too many ingredients for me. What if we did this and this and this? So like, I always had been doing stuff like that to begin with. So it's just become like my, I call it my cooking yoga or my Zen place has always been where I self care for myself is cooking. I love that. And I mean, and it shows too. And I do love that yeah. you, you know, you've simplified a lot of complicated recipes. I mean, I know it's like, even for me, I'm like, all right, you need like, you know, umeboshi paste. And people are like, I'm not going to go buy that. Or like a little bit of miso and da, 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 da. And you're like, no, no, we need like five things max. And I think that that is so, it's so easy for people, you know, to see that. And you have these amazing, yummy recipes. Um, do you have, like, you. A, do you have a special, like, are you like, do you veer towards, you know, Asian since, you know, Yan can cook? Is it, yeah. is it Italian? Is it just sort of like, it's all over the map, sort of whatever strikes your fancy? So usually Parmesan is my last name. So I usually go for Parmesan, Parmesan Goldstein, obviously. And so, <laughs> so I go usually for more Italian food, but also very American as well, too. And I do a little bit of um, Asian and some other things. But usually the way that I come up with my recipes is I'll be at work craving something and then I'll be like, like lasagna, and for instance, craving it. And then I get done with work. And I'm exhausted and I want, I have two hours left, like we've talked about before, to before I have to go to sleep. And I'm like, I still want to reward myself for all the hard work I did that day, but what can I do so I don't have to watch water boil? And I don't have to put this big casserole together. So like I've come up with recipes like one pot lasagna soup where the pasta just cooks in the tomato sauce and it's 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Or like frozen ravioli. Um, if you take it out of the freezer, you can use that as your noodles and they just steam and cook on their own. So like little things like that. So that's kind of how I come up with my recipes. So whatever I'm craving or if someone says to me, a patient or a friend says, oh my God, I want this so badly. I want like chorizo and rice. Then my head starts going, what would I make with chorizo and rice that I know that I'd still make if I got the groceries when I got home? I love that. I mean, and I love that inspiration strikes while you're, that happens to me too. And you're like driving around doing errands or you're with patients or whatever. And you're like, I want whatever it is. And you're like, I will make it happen for myself, but I, I don't want to spend 17 hours in the kitchen. So how oh. do you do it? No, I, I don't either. I went to culinary school. I love to cook. You love to cook. I don't, it's not an all day affair for me. And I don't Just want to one day a year, um, do I cook like a like as if I was cooking from scratch for hours and hours? It's Julia Child's birthday. I'll make beef bourguignon, but I may and I'll make it as close as I possibly can to um, to the way that she does it. Other days, I throw it in the slow cooker and I call it a day. But like you know, on her holiday, to if that's a national holiday to me. I then I like go in the kitchen. I put French music on and stuff. But otherwise, who has honestly who has the time or the hands to go from the from the fridge to their end living in new york city um i get a lot of things delivered but if i'm not getting it delivered i don't want to carry all those groceries so it kind of like 
is it convincing? Think about if moms out there who have like four kids and have a career and have things to do. Like, you know, I, I'm, that's great if you have the time, but you know, you want more self care and more time for yourself too. everyone, no matter where you live. So like, I always think about that when I do it, it's always about the gratitude. Like where can I find more gratitude in my life or more time to myself? Which I think is amazing. So I want to go back to the Julia Child birthday thing. Yeah. <laughs> what day of the year is that? I knew you were going to say that. I don't remember. You know, what happens is, is that I see it on Instagram or Facebook or something like that. And then I go and I, and then I do it. Like if I see it, I'll go, okay, some, sometimes it's right on the day. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to go get the stuff. Even if it's like a day that I work really late, then I'll go and I'll make it still. I'll wow. find out from you though. Okay. That is dedication. Um, when you do cook like her, do you um, do the voice and do you wear an apron? No. Oh, like, um, we've got to get into character. Like this is method acting, right? Like you've got to really embody Julia Child, but. I pretend she's with me and I sometimes sing the French music, even though I don't speak a word of French or ever took French. So it's like Jason's French. Um, but I, but you know, yeah, it's just like all about like, you know, she was like to me, one of my culinary heroes because she, even though it's like a lot of steps, she made it look so easy and she had fun. And it was passionate. It wasn't stressful. And, you know, she like, it was almost like she was always dancing with her food in a way like she was just one with the food which is one of the things about like chop happy is as i always talk about like as you stir your things talk about your gratitude for her, and it's really all of that is to be in the now and she was really in the now with her cooking it almost felt less like she was teaching you and more like you're having a glass of wine in her kitchen as you, and you were watching her cook and you were a guest in her kitchen so like that's kind of like the inspiration i get and that's why i love her so much I love that. I mean, it's, and it's, I, I agree with you. I mean, I've watched her cook too. So your food blog, Chop Happy, I mean, it, it makes me happy when I see your posts, when I, I mean, I talk to you and just getting to know you, it's, it is light and it is like that gratitude and that joy and that self-care really mm -hmm. shines through. When did you start the food blog? I mean, you've loved to cook since an early age. You have this career as a successful chiropractor. You have a thriving practice in Manhattan. I've lived in Manhattan. When the fuck did you have time to start a food blog? <laughs> so, you know, years and years ago, I had, I can't even remember what happened, but something really, really bad happens, right? And um, like not bad in the general grand scheme of things now, but like for me, bad, right? Because as you know, and this is what you do, is just that like, it doesn't matter, you, you don't measure what's bad from other people if it's in your life and it's bad, you should feel those feelings and learn from it, but also don't judge it, you know, go with it, right? Yeah. And I was, and I'm a pretty happy guy um, for the most part. And I was stuck in this sort of sadness. And I saw on TV, Rachel Ray's next cookbook author. And my husband was like, you need to do this. He was like, you love to cook. I had never made recipes. I've never said I wanted to be on anything, but you love to cook and you're always changing recipes on online to make them easier. So, so enter. So I reluctantly entered the entered and I made it to the top 10 and each stage you had to have 30 recipes um, for it. And ironically it was leftover remake. So it was double the recipes. And I'm like, what do I do now with this stuff? And he's like, why don't you do a blog? And I'm like, okay, I don't know what that is. I literally was not internet savvy at all. Um, even for my practice, someone else did it for me. So that's what I did is I started it. And, you know, after my mom and Tom and friends um, watched it and stuff, eventually I figured out social media and that's where it came from is because I've always loved cooking like you asked before. And I've always wanted to be, when I was a little kid, I used to pretend I was on the Food Network or, you know, PBS or whenever it was. So it's always been a passion of mine. And one of the greatest lessons I learned from that was to learn, and I talk about this all the time in Chop Happy, is to learn from the sadness. Like, yeah, sadness is going to happen. I'm a happy guy, but I do get sad, as like everyone does. Everyone was asking me that question. And But the key is, is that when those things happen, to really take that once you get over it and to figure out what could I have learned from that? And from that, something so amazing and a light for me was opened because now I get to do this chop happy thing. And it's taught me that anything's possible, that you don't define yourself just by I'm a chiropractor or I'm a New Yorker or I'm this and I love all those things. But that doesn't have to only define you. You can do as much or as little as you want. Um, in life. So that's kind of how it started. And then I love SoulCycle. So SoulCycle, um, I 
I said to, I once said, I'm like, I love this cooking thing and this busyness thing, but like, you know, like to help with tips and stuff because it comes natural to me because it's my life. But how can I add, make cooking soul cycle in some way? And I was like, and I was like, you know what? When I stir, I'm thinking about what I'm grateful for. Why don't I just say that out loud? And that's how it all started. I love that. And I mean, you do infuse a lot of that. Like, you know, you've got your, you know, posts that are inspirational on different days of the week. And it's like, you know, you are, you matter and you do, and it's like, awesome. I mean, it is true. And I, I love, you know, and I want to talk a little bit more about, you know, you aren't just one thing, you know, it's not, you're not just a chiropractor. You're not just a New Yorker. You're not just a food blogger. You're not just, and I think we all have struggled with that, right? It's sort of like, you know, what is your purpose in life? And, you know, it was like, we identify with either a profession or where we live or whatever. And it's sort of hard to be that multi-passionate person. So how do you find the balance? Because I think that that is tricky for a lot of people. I know, I mean, even for myself, I'm like, how do I put all of my things together? You know, I worked in the corporate space. I'm a yoga instructor. I went to culinary school. I studied Chinese medicine. And it's like, you just do it all, right? Like, and it just will eventually sort of be birthed as whatever it is. Um, yeah. And it's, it is a little hard to find balance, but how did you, you know, kind of figure that out? Well, first of all, but following you, you look like you have it all together too. Cause okay. I watch and you're microdosing and all that stuff. So I'm like, wow, she really knows how to like combine everything all to where it is. So, okay. so you do a very good job of that on yourself. So that if I was interviewing you, that would be the question I would have asked you is how do you, how do you do all that? My here? answer is smoke and mirrors all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Well, my answer is really simple. It's give yourself a break. Like not you specifically, but no, I do. I mean, I'm taking that in. I'm like, yep. Tell yeah. me. And give yourself a break. Like, don't be so hard on yourself when you're type A, like I am, or like, you know, you're, you're very passionate and very enthusiastic, or if you're very introverted and chill, you know, give yourself a break. Like it doesn't all happen at once. Like I always say, and I don't know if Oprah climbs mountains, but I love Oprah. You know, if Oprah was climbing the mountain to success, she didn't just jump from the bottom to the top. Very little things. If you focus on the little wins of things and you don't give yourself too much of a timeline, then um, it's much more enjoyable and it goes much faster and it's much more more where it should be. And then also I say do something that's natural to you. So I go home and cook anyway. So people always ask me, why? Do, how do I have time? It's like, well, before I even had a blog or even knew what that meant, I would go home and I'd watch a show on TV and I'd be like, oh my God, that's too many ingredients. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And I go home and I make it. So all that's added to that is a camera, right? From there, of course, there's editing and all stuff. But, you know, that's the other thing I would say. But I always say don't limit yourself for anything you're going to do. Always believe in yourself. Always know there's a possibility and a gratitude. Look, I'm a chiropractor from New York City and no culinary background. And I got to be on Food Network. And so, you know, I can do that with all the things that my mind told me were stacked against me. Could you imagine what other people can do? So, you know, I always say believe in yourself and don't create roadblocks for yourself as well. And, and just keep going. Never give up. Yeah. I, I mean, that's so true. It's mindset and it's self-acceptance and self-awareness and self-love. And these are all things that I learned from a dear friend of mine who I've had on the show. I call her the mindset maven. It is, it is about the mindset. And I mean, you are going to, you need to eat when you get yeah. to work. So what's important to you, I think is for me, a big important distinction is it, okay, do I just want to shove food in my face and get it from, you know, a restaurant, which, you know, we should be supporting our restaurants right now. I'm a huge fan. I mean, I worked in restaurants as well. That's another story for another time. <laughs> Not my profession of choice. Um, glad I did it. Glad I have that experience. But, right. you know, if cooking for yourself and feeling joy and feeling health, you know, you're fueling your body with things that, you know, you're nourishing yourself. Um, you know, I feel like you can find the time to do it. And, you know, is it going to be necessarily an award-winning meal? not necessarily Doesn't matter. It, exactly but like yeah. what you know you have to learn you have to start somewhere there are some things that I make that my mom is like this is not one of your better items <laughs> um, and then you know conversely there are things that you know it's like all right this is a winner and it's like all right how can you build on that so that actually makes me you know what I want to ask you next is all right so you come home and sometimes you're just like I'm going to throw some things together yeah what has not turned out well um, and how did you, you know, were you like, we're never trying this again? Or, you know, was it a salvageable sort of like, all right, the next time I make it, I know where I fucked up. And also what was sort of this like super happy accident? 
So the super happy accident was the meatballs, which you see me post a lot. I call them my good luck meatballs because those are the meatballs that got me to the top 10 for Ridgeway and started this all. And also were the thing I made on, on um, Food Network Star. It was a meatball burger for Bobby Flay and Giada. So Italian and burger. So I was like, oh my God, they, they're, I'm serving the king and queen of these things. And they liked it. So it was good. But it was a happy accident because something about um, bread smushed with milk grosses me out. I don't know why all the recipes for um, meatballs have that. And meatballs are one of my favorite things, but it just grossed me out. So every time I make a recipe, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to do this. It just weirds me out for some reason. So it's like, what can I do to get that sort of cheesy moisture into there? And I saw a recipe that had ricotta cheese in it. And so I figured, okay, I'll try that. And it worked so perfectly. It was such a happy accident. I use it for all my meatballs and meatloaf recipes because it like melts in. And it, it's one of those foolproof things for busy people that you can throw into into your meatloaf or meat, meatballs or chicken or whatever and it just makes sure it turns out great so that was my happy accent and i love it and we're cut to cheese if i ever would, was never to have cheese again would be the one thing i wouldn't give up because it's my good luck and then on the other hand i secretly don't like chicken oh, so for me either mm -mm, yeah yeah so chicken recipes, so when I have to do a chicken recipe for like, you know, magazine or when I was going on Food Network and I, you know, it's competition. So they might ask me to do, do that. That's what I practice the most. So fried chicken definitely did not work out well for me at all. And roasted chicken at the time. Now I know how to do it because I like, then I wanted to know how to do it. Then I became obsessed. But I, but um, that was definitely something that didn't work out. But it's okay because you learn from it. And every time chicken shows up on the, that's the thing is if there's something that you're not good at, um, you you just you know if you just keep learning and keep trying, it happens. So like I just would watch Chop, they'd be making chicken, or they'd watch this a cooking show, and all of a sudden I'd be watching it like this. I'm like, okay, here we go. They do this, and I would get little tips from it. But you almost, I have a couple chicken recipes because people love chicken. But for the most part, that's something that I don't usually. Yeah, I'm I'm with you um, on the chicken. I just as yeah, I don't do bird. Um, <laughs> and I just started eating meat again in the last oh. year. Um, I didn't eat meat for the better part of ten years. Where I went to culinary school was a mostly vegan culinary school. Oh. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean we did it in New York. It was it was called the Natural Gourmet, um, and they closed. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so they know this. It was on Twenty First Street in between Fifth and Sixth, closer yeah. to floor it was great it was like I loved it I mean I had such a great time and it was I mean it was like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory I, the outfits were similar to an Oompa Loompa it was <laughs> I had no game in those outfits it was like checkered pants and the white coat and the whole it was not I'm cute. Sure you were fashionable. oh nope um there was like I looked it was bad I'll send you a picture I'll post picture I don't care you know it's sort of like this is who I am but right um but it was mostly vegan and that's where like sort of the you know the Chinese medicine was my love for it was ignited because we talked a lot about that there. So, you know, it was like very health supportive and we were doing gluten free and making our own nut milks and all of this stuff that, you know, now is sort of very trendy. I was like, we were doing this 10 years ago, which was really cool. Um, so I was like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to try and not eat meat. I just went to six months of culinary school. Let me cut it out. So for the better part of 10 years, I didn't eat red meat. I started to incorporate wow. fish back in. I would eat cheese every once in a while. I never liked eggs, even as a kid. They kind of gross me out. Literally, the only way I can eat them is like poached or over medium, which is really weird. But anyway, <laughs> but you know, recently I was uh, I was at a naturopath and my ferritin level was low, and that's a whole separate story. But he was like, "You have to eat meat. You need hemi sources of iron." I mean, yeah. my hair was falling out. It was just like thyroid issues. Oh, it was yeah. I mean, like how I'm not bald. I have so much hair anyway. But like, knock on wood. Yeah, no, seriously, it was great. But, um, but yeah, so I just started eating meat again. And, you know, I'm with my mom. She's starting to eat it again, too, because I'm here. And so I was like, we should make these meatballs because it's just something I haven't eaten a meatball in like. Oh, I wish I was there. We were in East Coast, West Coast. I would bring you meatballs um, for you. I have your recipe. So I'm going to have to make the recipe. Yay, thank you. And so it'll be like you're there in spirit. I mean, I can think yeah. you while we're doing it. It's like, yeah, so go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Oh, yeah. and by the way, a quick note for anyone who's watching this naturopaths are amazing. When I went to chiropractic school, there's also a naturopath school, and we did each other's clinics um, when we were in clinic. And it's, it's life changing. And anything you're taking, I'm not recommending as a 
doctor, but anything you take from traditional medicine comes from a plant or an herb or something of that nature. And that's all it means to be an astropath. They're doctors and they get certified just like regular doctors, mm -hmm. but yet also have, um, they use the, the form that you're getting in a pill synthetic, they do the natural form. And as a doctor, I got to say, I'm not recommending you don't take medicine. I'm not recommending any of that stuff. I'm yeah. just giving you another alternative option because it's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I am such a, I'm, yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm into it. I mean, I'm such a fan. My naturopathic doctor is, I mean, we geek out. Like every time I go there, it's like, we have to keep an eye on the time. Cause like, we'll start going down like the food path and all of this other stuff. And anyway, yeah. but, so I'm going to try your meatballs, which is going to be amazing. Yay. I'm so excited. You got to also take a picture. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, look who I'm telling that to. Yeah. I'm like, Instagram guru over here. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Thank you. That's very kind of you. But um, anyway, so, you know, we're talking about the meatballs. We're talking about the chicken, not a fan. Um, and, you, you know, you win this big contest. Like, that's amazing. Obviously life changing. You know, do people come into your practice and they're like, because of that? Like, was that sort of or no people like it's very separate. It's separate, except a lot of my um, patients follow me because, um, you know, I'll be like, be, I'll be talking about a blog and they'll be like, oh, Dr. J, you have a blog. And I'll tell them that. And then when I got on the Food Network, so I've never taken time off until now, of course, because the um, COVID thing, I took a month off because it's a month of filling, fil filming. So, um, and I said it was to do a seminar and things. People had some weird answers of like what they thought was happening to me. But um, when it finally came out far away from there and people were like, would be like, I was watching the Food Network and all of a sudden I heard my doctor on the thing. And then that's when people started to be like, follow me more and stuff. So that's where it came. But it's actually my life that from there that, melds into the other thing. So it was very natural. And, um, but I ironically keep them separate, but together at the same time, I feel a lot of inspiration from what people um, talk about what they're eating and what they're not eating. And like, but yet at the same time, you know, it's all because of my practice and being so high energy that when I come home, I need some way to decompress so I can take care of myself so I can take care of other people. So it all just kind of like, ironically, sometimes the, you know, they say about you get signs in life. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Sometimes those signs are there for you the whole time and you just don't realize it. Like sometimes for anyone who's watching, if there's something that you want to do, I'd start with something passionate, right? And I'd start with little steps so that you don't overwhelm yourself and give up. But, you know, I was a chiropractor by day and cooking at night. And all I was doing is exactly what I'm doing now. I'm busy. I want more time with my family. And, but I don't want to like take out all the time because it costs too much money. And I also want to make sure that I'm cooking things that are rewarding me for the day because you deserve a reward at the end of the day for working hard, whether it was good or bad. So plus I needed more time. So I combined that all together. I cook, stir and talk about gratitude. So I create a space in my kitchen that is self-care, is my soul cycle off the bike. And I do things quick. So I have more time to hang out and watch Bravo and Housewives and um, Food Never. <laughs> Those are my only things. That's I don't watch Shakespeare. It's it's um, Ramona and Chopped. Yeah, um, we there we don't need to go down the whole Bravo <laughs> like that. That's uh, that'll be another topic. Um, yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about the self care. I mean, I love that you know your kitchen is you know it's like Soul Cycle. You know, it is it's uplifting. You know, you're stirring. You're like I'm practicing gratitude. Are there any other self care practices that you do or anything that has come up? during, you know, the quarantine stay at home fun? Yeah, I love to work out actually. And I didn't realize I did. Um, so I actually went the opposite way on the 15, the quarantine 15 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, uh, you know, I have a personal trainer that I go on Tuesdays and Fridays and I have a rule at, that I take and I do that purposely for myself. Um, not just to be healthy, but because I'm a chiropractor and things are physical, I just want to do something that's going to help my muscles stay where they need to be so I don't injure myself. So it's like my version of physical therapy. And um, so on those days, I would shut my phone off. That's the only time my phone's not there and, you know, put everything in. So for two hours a week, um, there's no contact with the outside world. It's just me and the weights. So to help balance myself out where I've I am a very, very high energy person and I'm doing chiropractic and then food blog and all this stuff. And thankfully I've had lots of different things come from the food blog. 
um, I was like, well, how am I going to fill my time? And so I've been doing workout classes online, doing, you know, soul cycle, um, on a bike with the, you know, the phone or whatever it is. And, you know, just things like that to maybe help myself. And my favorite thing, which I'm going to miss is cause I know I'm not going to, I go to work at 6:45 in the morning. So I know I'm not going to do this, but I love in the morning with my Christmas cup, I have coffee in my Christmas cup and I stare out the window at the buildings for like 30 minutes and it's that's my version of meditation i've been doing it every single day like around like 8 30 for clockwork i wake up i, I have the coffee already made in the night before because i like it iced and then i and i drink it staring out the window i feel like you can do that earlier in the day you know if it's important yeah. to make it you'll make it happen maybe not yeah. I don't know, but 6 40 6 45 is early as an yeah early. that is <laughs> yeah that's uh that's amazing what about any food aversions are there other than chicken you don't really like chicken are there any other things that you are just like nope not no place in my recipes well i used to not like eggs like you until one of my friends amy was like can you teach me how to make carbonara and i didn't even i knew what it was but i had never made it ever because i don't like eggs and it's raw eggs mixed into you know you know this pasta and it heats up that way so even though it was cooked i used to think that it wasn't there and scrambled eggs as well too and then because two different people amy and someone else about the scrambled eggs asked me to make it then i ended up liking it so, um, so that was my old feud version, which now I love, but, um, lamb, I'm not a real big gamey kind of person. I don't like lamb at all. I so lamb and chicken would be pretty much it. And unfortunately after that, I kind of like everything. No, I don't think that's unfortunate. I think that's, you're lucky. I have, mine is goat cheese. I hate mm -hmm. it with the it's fiber and 10,000 burning suns. It's, just, <laughs> I can't even smell it. Like when I smell it, uh, it's Yeah. I don't, yeah, I'm not, you know, I don't, it's weird. I don't love a lot of cheese. Um, yeah. I know I'm You're lucky for that though. I mean, I feel like I'm missing out on something a little bit though. Cause people are like, I love cheese. And I'm like, I don't get it. I mean, like I like a grilled cheese every now and again, but I'm not like, you know, cheese plate. Nope. Cause it's going to be sheep or goat. And I'm like, I'm not into that. It, I won't tell you what I think it tastes like. It's gross. <laughs> Anybody can love that. Um, <laughs> I love that. Are there any, you know, sort of last minute things that you want to say to people, like if they're afraid to cook or they're just like, you know, get in the kitchen, like what sort of inspirational messaging would you give to people? To so, so if you're afraid to go to cook, buy slow cooker, everything drops into the slow cooker. You don't have to do anything the night before, throw everything into the slow cooker, the day, right before you go to work, put it in the little slow cooker. <laughs> and press low as you can go much longer than whatever recipe says six hours go 10 hours if that's how long you work and then come home and you are going to open up your door into my place the apartment you know how you lived in new york how it smells through the door you're going to smell this delicious meal and it's going to be like a big culinary hug for you saying welcome home i'm here to nourish you everything's okay that's my number one tip i tell people who don't like to cook buy a slow cooker and Find something and just drop things in the slow cooker and that's it. And the other thing is this find pantry sort of ingredients. Like I have a five ingredient marinara and almost all of it comes from the pantry and it doesn't even need to be cooked if you don't want to. So like find things like five ingredients, but don't go for things that you wouldn't normally cook. So I like that you asked an awesome question. What do I go towards? And I go towards more Italian stuff. So if I'm cooking for myself or you're cooking for yourself or someone who doesn't cook a lot, Go for something you like because you want that encouragement. It's like your um, positive message or positive quote from Instagram is your food. So it will give you that courage to cook again. But most importantly, we all have to cook at some point. I mean, I, I don't, unless you're Rockefeller, you can't take out every single day. You, um, you got to cook some point. So find something that you really love to cook. Make sure it's easy to do and just make it with little expectations and just let it be and just cook it. And I, I just think with life, um, any mistakes you're going to make is really, that's the key to success is just learn from those mistakes and move on because um, no one, I mean, I cook like every single day now and like I, nothing, I, nothing comes out perfect the first time. So, and you went to culinary school and you could cook a new recipe and it doesn't matter how seasoned you are. You could be Julia Childs and a new recipe doesn't come out. So just give yourself some credit and to know that all that matters is you try and that you don't give up. And I, I think that really helps, but slow cooker, slow cooker or sheet pan meals would be my number one because there's very little cleanup and it's very easy. It's drop and cook. Yeah, I need to get in on the sheet pan meals. I'm, you know, I still like, I, yeah. 
Well, you know what you could do is um, the frozen yolky on a sheet pan. And then you can, since you're, you're a really cool, healthy cook, you could just take, you know, cherry tomatoes and veggies and all you want. Olive oil, salt, pepper, 20 minutes in the oven at like 425 degrees and the um, frozen gnocchi cook um, while there's, so there's no boiling and it all just right there. And that's it. You have to give that a whirl. Yeah. yeah. Some time. Definitely. Stop well, happy. <laughs> Seriously, I know. Um, that is amazing. So speaking of Chop Happy, where can people find you? Oh, okay. Thank you. So chophappy.com or at Chop Happy for Instagram as well too. And then I'm on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, although Twitter's not my, my number one favorite, but I it's um, but Instagram would be the best actually at Chop Happy. And then if anyone wants to learn more about cooking or about recipes or has a problem they want to be solved and they're busy feel free to email me or, or text me. And if someone just wants to talk about inspi being inspired, not on a therapy basis, but like, hey, I want to do this, I'm always happy to help. I love helping people. I think that's where you get a lot of gratitude. So feel free to reach out. I'm just very grateful. And I'm so grateful for you. You are the best. So are you. So are you. This thank was so you, fun. Thank you. This was so fun. Well, you guys, he's amazing. You have to check out his Instagram. I mean, every day I'm like, it's like the first thing that, you know, when I open it, it's like, there you are. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Just, it's like, yeah, it's like a little ray of sunshine in my in my day. And it's just, it's amazing. I'll include all of that information in the comments below so people can find you. If you have any uh, questions or comments, definitely drop them below. Slide into his DMs. I'm sure he would not mind. No. It doesn't sound like. Um, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Yay, thank you, thank you, thank you.